almost 2,000 kilometers long, with amazing coastal waters, vast, beautiful beaches, and don't forget the amazing animal encounters. Isolated beaches all to yourself, and tons of off-roading. An adventure around every corner. Welcome to Baja, California. For us, this was where the Pan American Highway started. And finally a place we could take some time to relax. The Baja Peninsula is full of amazing campsites, especially if you love falling asleep to the sound of the ocean. Our first few spots when we entered, we stayed at least three nights at each, as traveling through the United States took a lot out of us. Driving back roads to places unknown, at least to us, was all part of the fun here in Baja, and they never seemed to end. Baja will forever go down in our memories as one of our favorite places in all of Central America. Vast, empty, gorgeous are just some of the words we can use to describe this place of comfortable solidarity. We entered Baja from the north, in the very small border crossing of Tecate, and to date has been the most calm crossing out of any Central American country. Perhaps it was made easier by doing some of the online work ahead of time, but I don't think we would do that again. So, we made it into Mexico. We have everything we need. We only made things a little bit more complicated than it was necessary. Yep. But, um... Got our FMM stamp. Yep. And we got our tip already. We don't need it yet for, uh, for in Baja, but yep. we got it already for when we're going to the mainland. Ready to go? Now we're in. Let's yep. go uh, enjoy Mexico. We got Ooh. six months, twice as much as we had in the US. Baja involves a lot of driving. The highways almost seem endless especially if you plan on bouncing from coast to coast, like we do. From the town of Tecate to the southern tip, we will drive well over 2,000 kilometers in our time here. Many of the kilometers are from dirt roads, as we like to explore off the beaten track. Our four-wheel drive Tacoma, paired with the super rugged four-wheel camper, have been able to take us everywhere we want to go, and even out of places we were never meant to be in. The Trans-Peninsular Baja Highway is in pretty good condition, but once you start going off the side roads, things start to change. And that's why we're going by foot from here on. We're not taking the rest of the road. We're going by foot, it's just too crazy, too dangerous. This spot is known as La Lobera and is home to many different species of ocean life. Today, we will only see seals, or as I call them, the pit bulls of the sea. The tide is in and there's a lot of waves. They're getting absolutely rocked. It took us about two weeks to get through Baja North, going from what we decided were interesting stops, like this giant sand dune in between the ocean and the mountains, as we might get a bit of FOMO if we skip something. Traveling from the ocean to the Sea of Cortez on the east side of Baja, 
we visit the popular destination of Bahia de Los Angeles, which involves a few hundred kilometers of empty and seemingly desolate land. A beautiful place, but we might be here at the wrong time. It's January and the heavy winds are keeping us inside. It's not all bad though, as we have lots of time to cook. Yeah, but there's one thing to this place, and it is called the Notorious Westerlies. Yeah. Which means there is wind. A lot, a lot, a lot of wind. A lot of wind. <laughs> For the moment, it's pretty calm because we're behind the camper. But if we move over here, that is the wind that we have been dealing with for the last three days and three nights, so I haven't slept much. So, I would say, let's move on from this place. The major issue with a pop-up camper is the wind. If the wind is aggressive enough, then it will force us to leave some places, like we just did. This is our view for today. This is where we spent the night, and we're going to be spending two nights here. We are finally getting closer to Baja South and uh, you can see it on the white beaches that you see over there and we'll also be meeting more wildlife so super excited for that but today we're going to take it slow and we are just going to enjoy a day at the beach. So we're back on the west side of Baja coming from the east side away from the wind. There it is again. We found this amazing spot on I Overlander. Beautiful water. Lots of wind still. Never, never mind. Bouncing between coast to coast in typical fashion, we find ourselves at our last location in Baja North, and things already look different. This is the image of Baja we had in our head before we came here. Looking out over the ocean, we see our next destination, many kilometers away. And if we look just a bit closer, we notice some bottlenose dolphins just below, either playing or hunting in the nearby bay. This place is officially gorgeous. <laughs> officially gorgeous. I want to go inside the... Let's try. I yeah. think you can go inside. Oh, cool. Nice. You coming? <laughs> yeah. Ooh, careful. Ooh, there's, oh. there's a step missing. As we go further south, the weather is getting better and we can finally take off our soft shells. And in our time here along the Baja Peninsula overall, the weather has been perfect, aside from the wind. Sunny days, cool nights. January and February seem to be the best time to visit this land of beaches. Researching a place will only get you so far. Your experience is never the same as if you read about it in a book or watch a YouTube video. We encourage you to have your own adventures. It really opens your mind to the world around you. We're in Guerrero Negro and it's a pretty cool place to be right now. Yes, because between December and March, whales come here to do their nesting. I'm so excited. I've been yeah. waiting for this my whole life. I've never seen whales close by, so I'm so excited for today. It's gonna be fun. Let's go. Let's go. Guerrero Negro is the first city you'll come across when you enter Baja Sur. And you should probably stop. Also since you'll probably have to go grocery shopping here as well. But mainly if you're here in January to March, then you're in luck. It's grey whale nesting season and there are numerous companies willing to take your money to bring you to Laguna Ojo de Libre. Lindsay. Lindsay. Your name? Lucy. Lucio. Okay. Where is the best spot on the boat? Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, sit on the comfy one. Oh, every, oh there, yeah. yeah. Travis. Travis. Which one goes to? Yeah. 
We are pretty lucky. Look at our boat. <laughs> this is just us and Lucio. And then look at the other boat behind us. It's a little busier. We got really lucky with this tour. In only a quick 20 minute drive to the center of the Laguna, our captain stops and we wait for the party to start. The whales, they don't come up right away, but we start to see them more and more in the distance. They are extremely active right now and we realize we are in the best time to be here. He's right here. Here, take over, take over, take over. Oh my god! Ah. Oh. What? He's back. What? Look at his mouth! <laughs> These friendly giants love the attention, blowing bubbles, getting head rubs, and even spraying us with water. They're really playful. Oh! <laughs> you got me. <laughs> Look at that big one. Look this majestic gray whale stayed with us for an entire hour before our captain, Lucio, decided our time was up and we had to turn back. An unforgettable and amazing experience. Hello, Gato. Puppies. Other puppies. <laughs> you ready to eat? Mmm. So excited. In the small town of San Ignacio, in the center of the peninsula between the ocean and the Sea of Cortez, we stop for an hour or two to see what the fuss is all about. Literally only comprising a town square, it's not a large place but the food is pretty good, and the architecture is worth noting. We are again heading from one side to the other. Our next destination, the Bay of Conception. Still not having paid for a single place to camp here in Baja, we are in love with the seclusivity of it all, and this is an amazing place to overland internationally for the first time. The way forward is not always clear. Sometimes it's obvious, and other times we aren't sure it's even there. But that is part of the adventure. And eventually, we find ourselves on the smooth highway, turning a corner to another amazing Baja view. On the Bay of Conception, we saw some of the largest concentrations of other travelers we have ever seen. All the very easily accessible beaches were absolutely crammed with massive RVs, clearly here to take advantage of the beautiful weather and cool water and we can't blame them. We passed so many people. We wondered if any of them were also driving the Pan American Highway. Maybe we'll see them again. We're at our spot for the night along the Bay of Conception. What a wonderful spot it is, right on the water. 
nothing around except cactus, mountains, and the ocean. What do you think? I love it here. It's a bit, bit windy, but we can't avoid that. Yeah, it's just windy everywhere here. <laughs> We managed to find another remote campsite that needed a bit of four-wheel drive action to reach. So, luckily for us, it wasn't full of 40-foot RVs. Full of cows and horses wandering wildly, however. It's also still a bit windy. We decide tonight will be the night to have a fire, if we can collect enough driftwood. Because as you can see here, there are no trees, but there's plenty of memories. The next day, the wind has finally died down a bit, but we don't take advantage as we oddly only spend one night here at this spot. Baja Sur has so many more things to explore, and we are quite excited to see what's next. We're in Laredo after spending a night at the Bay of Conception. It's a really nice little town. Really touristy, but super cute. We just had ice cream. Um, it's great so far. <laughs> I can probably count on one hand the cities we actually spent any time in on Baja. City exploring isn't really our thing, but Laredo is a nice decision, regardless of what you're looking for. We are, however, always looking for out-of-the-way points of interest. And we were recommended by a friend to visit a tiny village nestled safely in the mountains. All the roads here in Baja are the same. They seem endless and desolate, and never with any cell service, but always lead somewhere. We are in the mission of San Javier. All the way up in the mountains. Yeah. Drive here was absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful drive through the canyon. And this town is just the cutest I've ever seen. There's not much here. <laughs> it's just basically a church and some tourist spots like eating and whatnot. But so cute. Really cool here. Yeah. Let's check it out. The little Spanish architecture of its mission. It's really cool. And it doesn't matter where you seem to go. The roosters are everywhere and they seem to not understand what the morning is. <laughs> we don't like to backtrack, but this In-N-Out location was a cool stop. Of course we bought tacos in this tiny town. The small towns usually have the best stuff. Really only known for being the oldest monastery on Baja, San Javier was still worth a stop. If not for the architecture or the tacos, then for the views on the drive up. Like I said earlier, it's an in and out stop, so back down the mountain. You put a lot of kilometers on your vehicle around Baja. You want to be in a van or overland vehicle, because the time you want to stop for the night, there probably won't be a hotel. Agua Verde. Have you ever heard of it? We asked online if there was one place on the entire Baja Peninsula that we should not miss. And it turns out that place is Agua Verde. The road in is a very slow 40 kilometers with no guardrails or safety measures to stop you from falling over the edge. It took us a few hours from the main road, so you better make sure you have enough supplies for at least a couple days when you come here. Some people spend weeks. But at the end, you'll make it to this tiny seaside village. We found the best restaurant in Agua Verde. Okay, it's the only one. But other than that, we got a perfect mean, view. It also means it's the best. And the view, <laughs> yeah, the view is great. Right at the beach. Ooh. 
Love it! <laughs> Food has arrived. It looks delicious. Oh, Fish tacos mm. right here on the beach. Baja and Agua Verde. I'm so starving. Oh, <laughs> so hungry. Mm. That is super fresh. <laughs> There's two parts to Agua Verde. There's the town where you can camp as well, but then there's the sandbar where not everyone is capable of getting to. Still in Agua Verde, we're at a point on the beach for our camp. And this place is pretty cool. There's also a lot of other travelers here who are also doing the Pan American Highway. We've spoken with at least three other groups who are going to the same place we're going. This spot is amazing. <laughs> Apparently it gets way busier than this, but this is still really, really cool here. <laughs> Look she's out fishing. Let's go see how she's doing. No amenities other than a toilet at the local who runs the camp spot. You'll have to keep yourself busy. You can catch fish, or there's a hike at the end of the escarpment with a view on the Sea of Cortez. If you happen to have your own boats, then you can take a paddle around to fish from that, or experience some of the wildlife in the area like whales or dolphins. Whatever you're into, since you're a traveler like us, we know you'll love both the amazing drive-in and the campsite. We met so many amazing travelers here at Agua Verde, some of them on the Pan American Highway, some of them just down for the winter. We'd love to go back one day. Maybe we'll see you there. So sadly enough, we have to leave this place. This is the place we spent the longest time we've had until this trip until now. So we spend one night at Camp Cosme and then three nights on this beautiful spot in Agua Verde. But of course there is still a lot more to explore in uh, Baja. So we gotta keep going and we gotta explore some more. But before we do that we gotta get out of here and it's going to be quite challenging because there's only one track to drive and we gotta get up that hill first. So, hopefully that goes well. Are you ready for the hill? I'm driving up that hill. <laughs> so this is the famous hill we're all talking about. Some people can't make it here just because of this little hill. Going down is a bit exciting, but going up is necessary. Otherwise, we're stuck here. And he made it. Woo! <laughs> bye bye, Aqua Verde. Beautiful spot. We made it to Todos Santos. Yeah, first stop on Southern Baja. Yeah, and it is so cute over here. We just can't wait to go and visit some shops and yeah. check it out. Looks like a lot to see. Yeah. <laughs> This will be one of the last cities we visit in Baja, and it's definitely meant for tourists. Extremely vibrant, colorful, and welcoming. We enjoyed the few hours we were in Todos Santos. Right behind us is the original Hotel California from the song from the Eagles. Yeah, pretty famous little spot. Um, it's not 100% sure, but it's pretty much what they were talking about in the song. <laughs> cool little spot. That's kind of cool. We couldn't help but get some delicious tacos from a local street vendor. Anyone else sensing a pattern here? 
between tacos and ice cream, I think that's where a lot of our budget went in Baja. Toro Santos is definitely fancier than any other city we've seen so far here on Baja. Probably for good reason. They got to keep all the gringos entertained. <laughs> it is nice though. We like it. We're at this beautiful spot south of Toro Santos. Whales everywhere, literally hundreds of them out in the bay. It's so cool. Uh, beautiful white sand here, lots of travelers, it's really cool. Um, one thing we haven't been able to do is catch our own fish. We've tried many times. Luckily, a fisherman just came by and we just bought ourselves a fish, but we got to fillet it. So that's what we're doing next. Show me the fish. This is our yummy rooster fish. <laughs> I guess that's what it's called. <laughs> Taking the easy way out, buying this fresh fish from a local but having to figure out how to flay them with a dull knife. Maybe that's not the easy way. Some Baja beer! Look what we got here. We got some local beers. Yes! So we always, do. always a fan of trying local beers though whenever we go somewhere. So, yeah. try out some lo local Baja beer. Life is too short not to travel. We didn't want to wait until we have to retire to explore the world. And that's kind of how we've been living for a while now. So while we share the beach with other travelers, there's even more whales here. The gray whales we were visiting with up north are also here. From what we understand, the mother whales bring their young here to teach them how to hunt for their food. And while the babies are learning, the male whales are out further, keeping predators away. We end up spending a few days here, relaxing, as we have an exciting drive coming up, after all. This morning, we are getting ready for a new adventure. Yep, we made some friends in Agua Verde last week. We met up with them again today. We got coffee, and now we're gonna head into the mountains to a, a nice mountain drive overlooking um, Baja, California. It's gonna be really nice. Let's do some off-roading. That's gonna be fun. Hopefully. From the area of the beach in Todos Santos, we are taking the back roads on what is known as the Orange Road. These are the adventure vehicles of today. Let's go. Only a few kilometers of pavement before we finally say goodbye to it for a few days. The road isn't too bad, but it's still worth airing down. We drive straight into the morning sun towards the towering behemoths in the distance. Got some good stuff? Oh yeah, got some real good stuff. This isn't the first time we've met up with Travis and Leah, our friends, who are also on the Pan American Highway, and it won't be the last. It creates an entirely different trip when you're with other people. And if you're with the wrong people, it can even ruin it. But that's not what happened here. Nothing around but the dry desert. No cell service. Just two capable Toyota Tacomas and their crew. It's a couple hours before any scenery changes, when we are finally into the mountains. It 
it eventually starts to get a bit narrow, and numerous water crossings that are more or less just big puddles. No problem. But we're clearly getting much higher now. Higher than we have ever been here on Baja. And our vehicle's operating perfectly. Being careful not to drive over the edge while trying to admire the stunning landscape is not easy. Luckily there's two of us in a car. Finally approaching the summit, it's time for a break, for us and the trucks. Looks like we found paradise. Yeah, we had an amazing drive through the mountains on Orange Road. Yeah, and we found this little spot with some little water we can dip in. It's nice and cool, not too warm though. It's yeah. great, yeah. Would be really nice if we can set up camp here. We'll see, we don't know where we're staying. No. We uh, gotta we gotta coordinate with our with our friends. <laughs> yeah. They're checking at the ranch upstairs there if uh, if it's good for us to camp here or not. So fingers crossed, hopefully. Wherever you go, there's always something to do or see, even along this seemingly empty area. Including boulders that don't look like they should be here, with ancient handprints that are quite unusual. And just because it's winter, doesn't mean it's cool, so these water pools from the river are the best treat for the day. We'll never forget Baja, and as weird as it may sound, we won't forget some of the campsites we had here either. But most importantly, we won't forget the friends we made here and the memories that go along with them. Our paths may split soon, but that doesn't mean they won't ever cross again. We're also almost at the bottom of Baja, and that means our time is almost up. We are now on the most southern tip of Baja, California, and it is just gorgeous. We just saw the sunrise. There are some whales behind us as well. The whales are a lot bigger here. Here are the humpback whales. So they're like at least double the size of the gray whales we saw on the west side. We have the vans part right over there. This is the beach where we are camped. A couple of overlanders, a couple of van lifers. It's really cozy and just view on the ocean. It's pretty hard to get any more south than where we are now. So that means it's time to head back north. But obviously the long and slow way, just how we like it. We are heading to the popular spot of Cabo Pulmo, and this extremely scenic drive was almost not worth it for how many hours of washboards we had to drive on. We're here at Playa del Arbolito, finally. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful it's, spot. It's close to Cabo Pulmo and we are going to spend the whole day snorkeling, yeah. finally. Yeah, we're here. We've only been talking to people. Now it's time to get in the water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's go. You ready? Let's go. Baja, and especially Baja Sur, has surpassed all expectations. And we are in love. But one thing we actually haven't done is get into the water. With masks donned, we explore this watery world below. Even just offshore, there's lots of wildlife to see, including tons of parrotfish. Baja really does have it all, and we feel it is the ultimate overlander destination.
Did you see it? Just offshore, we could see something, but it was still just too far away. It's a baby humpback whale, acting like little kids do. Accompanied by mom and dad, they are clearly going somewhere, albeit a little slower due to the young one's playtime. The adults are almost twice as big as the gray whales we saw earlier. And this is also the time when humpbacks make their way to the area. The little one breaching constantly for about 20 minutes. Finally subsides and we lose sight of all three. Happy to have had this amazing opportunity. Our time is almost up. We are making our way to one last stop before heading to La Paz to catch the ferry. Smooth highways again feel like we are riding on air compared to the washboards of the coastal route. We are taking the evening to visit the town of La Ventana, which is famous for its windsurfing. And another curiosity. This is Playa Agua Caliente, and as its name suggests, there is hot water here. Extremely hot water. It's actually necessary to get some seawater to cool it down. But we make short work of that and are finally in La Paz. The next step is to make preparations for the ferry to the mainland. We spent close to two months on the Baja Peninsula. We spent most of that time in the south, but the entire thing was one heck of an experience. We made friends, came into contact with creatures we never thought we would, saw some of the world's most beautiful beaches, and created memories that will last forever, now immortalized in videos like this. The trip is far from over though. Mainland Mexico is over 10 times the size of Baja, and we still have four months to explore it all. We're going to make new friends, see new amazing things, and make even more memories. But for now, we are sailing across the Sea of Cortez with no idea with what's about to happen. <laughs>